Good morning, friends. My name is Reverend Julie Sterling. Thank you for joining our worship service as we celebrate the first Sunday in the season of Lent. Today, I am preaching from home. You may know that we had an incident this past week with a water pipe in the church sanctuary. Things are under control and we hope to be filming there again soon. Luckily, it occurred on Ash Wednesday while Eric and I were leading worship via Zoom. Today we start our Lenten journey together. We hope this will be a time for you to reconnect to the church and renew your relationship with God. Before we start our worship service today, we would like to share with you a few announcements for the upcoming week. was an ordinary fisherman who heard an extraordinary call. He wasn't rich or educated, but familiar with hard work. He was quick-tempered and impetuous, but possessed a passion that would change the world. He left everything to follow his teacher, yet struggled with doubt and fear. But Jesus saw in him what others did not, a rock on which to build his church. Join us as we explore Simon Peter. I invite you to join responsively in our call to worship. Let us pray. From water to wilderness, God's covenant continues. God's kingdom comes near. On stone and in hearts, God's covenant continues. God's kingdom comes near. From the ancestor of nations to the sun lifted up, God's covenant continues, God's kingdom comes near. We follow Jesus on the Lenten path. For where he is, we should be also.
been hung in the clouds, a unilateral disarmament in spite of our sin. God remains faithful to the covenant of steadfast love, even when we are unfaithful. Without fear, then, we confess our sins. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of mercy, we begin this Lenten season in confession. We do not live according to your ways, but according to our own. We condone violence, participate in systems of injustice, and use power to our own advantage at the expense of others. Forgive us, we pray, when we are tempted to follow paths other than those you have set before us. Teach us your commandments, help us to turn from evil in its many guises, and turn us toward your kingdom drawing near. In covenantal love, remember us, we pray, and be for us once more and always an ark of safety and new life. In Christ's name we pray, amen. As Noah and his family were brought safely through the flood onto dry ground, so in baptismal waters we are brought from death into new life in Christ. Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God, forgives us and reconciles us and all things in heaven and on earth. Thanks be to God for this good news. May mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. You thought I was asleep, did you? No, I was praying. Do you ever have trouble sometimes thinking about what to say to a friend? I do. Sometimes that same thing happens to me when I pray. I wonder how I can talk to God. Well, today I want to show you some something that will help you when that happens. It's called the five finger prayer. Now we have the thumb, which is the closest finger to us. That is to remind us to pray for our, our family, our brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers and husbands and wives. Then the next finger is the finger that points. And that is to remind us of the people who point us in the right direction, our teachers and our ministers. The next finger is our tallest finger, and that's to remind us to pray for our government officials, our president, our senators, our House of Representatives, our local government, even the mayor who they say now has COVID. Now the next finger is of course our ring finger and that is supposed to be the weakest finger there is and if you can ask the piano player and they'll say that that is the weakest finger. But that finger is to remind us of praying for the sick. And the last finger is the smallest. And you know what that one's for? 
That one's the finger that you pray for yourself. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Let the little finger remind you to pray for yourself. So the next time you are talking to God and you can't think of anything to say, let this five finger prayer help you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for prayer. Help us to remember this five finger prayer to remember those who need our prayers. Amen. Friends, as we prepare for our morning scripture reading, please join me in the prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Gracious God, in rushing waters and in dry wilderness, in every season and circumstance, we need your sustaining word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, proclaim the good news among us today so that we may repent and believe and see anew that time is fulfilled and the kingdom has come near. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. Hear the word of the Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with wild beasts, and angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome, friends. It's good to worship with you today. This Sunday marks the first step in our Lenten journey together. Over the next five weeks, we will focus on the disciplines of prayer, sacrifice, giving, penitence, and fasting in preparation for Holy Week and Easter Sunday. Traditionally, we use Lent as a time to refocus from our normal, hectic, everyday schedule and turn our hearts to God. But these 12 months have been anything but normal. In fact, in many ways, we have been taking part in our Lenten discipline for months. We know what it's like to sacrifice and turn to God with our troubles. We have been fasting for months and have worked hard to help others in need. This pandemic has made, it, made us humble and made us realize that we are lost without God. Each step of this past year has been a significant journey. Still, I realize this time is especially important for us. With everything on our plate, we still need time to heal. Hopefully, the provided opportunities for fellowship, study, and prayer will aid in healing during these uncertain times. We start out this week of Lent with the theme of promise. In our lectionary reading for this Sunday, we hear about the gifts of God's covenant with all his creation. In Genesis 9, 8 through 17, the sign of the rainbow assures us that no matter the storm, God is with us. In verse 12 and 13, God tells Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. The same waters that can cause so much harm are also life-giving agents of hope. Through the gift of baptism, we are reminded of our own commitments to God and to one another. God has made us to be stewards and to care for one another. That is our purpose. When we give of our heart and give of ourselves 
God is working through us. This past week, the storms in Texas have made a, a reminder in the importance of stewardship. Images of goodwill to both people and animals in need express how we are all interconnected as God's creation. We may not be in the same boat, but we are definitely in the same storm. This Sunday, we also celebrate the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. For the same Spirit that guided Jesus in his baptism and through his temptation in the desert in the beginning of his early ministry is with us today. Through the work of the Spirit, we can never stray too far from our walk of faith. The good news is that no matter what, God is with us on every step of the journey to the empty cross. Over the next few weeks, I encourage you to find ways to recommit yourself to God. Take time to reconnect and grow in faith. Our church will try to assist you by providing tools to enhance your Lenten discipline. Each Tuesday night at 7 p.m., SPC will host a Lenten study on Zoom on the book, Simon Peter, Flawed but Faithful Disciple. On Wednesday afternoons from three to five, I will be available, weather permitting, for outdoor office hours. Come stop by to visit or check out the prayer trail. We will have new prayer stations each week for you to use. You can take this time to drop off your offering or any donations you would like to place for the food pantry. You can also just socially distance visit with me. You're also welcome to join us for a prayer group on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. on Zoom and for our Sunday morning worship watch party on Zoom at 7.15 a.m. As always, Lenten devotions will be provided by the church through email or snail mail. Friends, I hope this new week meets you with peace and joy. May this Lenten season give you comfort and closeness to God, and may it help you grow in faith and in love. This is a journey we take together. Rejoice and be thankful. Friends, hearing these words, I ask you to join with me in saying, Amen.
Let us join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we join in our prayer of intercession and Lord's Prayer, let us take a moment to lift up prayers for our friends at Lake Prince Woods, our friends and loved ones dealing with illness and loss, prayers for our students and teachers, our doctors, nurses, scientists, and prayers for our military and police, and prayers for leadership everywhere. We'd like to lift up prayers also for our friends in Texas recovering from a major winter storm. We'll take a moment of silence and join in prayer. Let us pray. Steadfast God, thank you for sheltering us in the storms of life. Thank you for ministering to us through angels seen and unseen in times that test us. Thank you for claiming us as people beloved forever. Because of your great love and care for us, we trust you in our brightest joys and deepest needs. We rejoice in the dark clouds of trouble are taken over by light of your presence and new possibilities when things settle down after a time of tossing about, when the great storm is over and when the promise of resurrected life takes hold in us with sure and certain hope. Hear our prayers, we ask, for the deep needs of the world. In places of violence and warfare, give us the courage to lay down our weapons of death and promote life and well-being instead. In places of drought and fire, bring rain and make the earth colorful and verdant again. In places where the waters overtake their boundaries, allow the overflowing chaos to recede. Loving God, in life and in death, we belong to you. So in the midst of life, we entrust ourselves to your care. We are bold to ask for help when we are confused, lost, or afraid. We are eager to ask for healing for our bodies and minds, whether wounded, ill, or recovering. And we are unceasing in our prayers for those we love who are far from us physically, emotionally, or spiritually. In the midst of death and grief, even though we are weary, we return again and again, praying for comfort, for an easing of the pain that comes from loss, and for the light of your presence to pierce the present darkness. As the heavens were torn open at Jesus' baptism, and the curtain of the temple was torn at his crucifixion, so now tear open anything that divides us from you or hides your presence in our lives or in our church. We desire to hear your voice of love, to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and to see you clearly. Lead us to serve others faithfully as disciples of Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us now join on our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, as we join in our offering, I invite you to hear these words. Because we believe in Jesus Christ, God's time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near, we respond in tangible ways by doing acts of justice and compassion and by sharing our resources we bear witness to the good news of the gospel. The offering is received in gratitude to God. Let us pray. God of steadfast love and faithfulness, we are humbled as we try to do what is right and walk in your ways. Receive, we ask, these offerings and use them for your own good purpose in the church and in all creation, we pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, it has been a wonderful day of worship. Thank you for joining me in my home. I hope you have a wonderful start to your Lenten journey. Remember, this is a journey that we take together for the glory of God. As Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness, so we will spend 40 days this season of Lent. Consider children of the covenant, the faithfulness of God, and what it means to be baptized in Christ. Live each day proclaiming the good news in, a world, in word and deed that God is with us and the kingdom is near. May the God of covenant, faithfulness unfold you. The beloved Son encourage you and the Holy Spirit descend upon you in blessing this day and forever. I send you out today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.